Hi, I'm Ruth from the Information Labs Data School and I'm going to show you how to build an iterative macro to download multiple pages via an API. Let's jump into Alteryx and get started. This video is following on from a previous one that took the URL for the Rick and Morty API, downloaded the data um, into a stack of fields and then output that as well as going back in, taking the URLs and downloading those two. So we only have 20 records here because this particular API call takes 20 records and then stops. And we can see if we look on the bit of data we clipped out previously, we have that it tells us there were 34 pages uh, numbering 671 records and it shows us previous page null because there is no previous page on the first page. Next page is page two. So we know that we're going to have this URL going up there until we get to the 34th page. And that's what we want to do. We want to take this URL, put it back in here and keep doing it till we get a nice stack of all of the data that we can output or um, output the images from. So we're going to start off by copying out the workflow to that point and we'll take it into a new page and paste it and we'll just run that. So we take ourselves to the point where we had this next page telling us it's page two and we want to take that out. So we're going to take it where the index is equal to next, we'll get that row. So we'll say index equals next, that gives us our row and then from there we're going to want to take this column, which is our new URL, and we'll call it URL. So we'll use a select tool to choose just the column we want, squeeze, which is JSON value string. We're going to call it URL. We don't need all the indexing categories. So this has got the exact same name as this column, and now we will have the exact same, which we just run, we now have the exact same output on this end. So the next thing for us to do is to replace this URL with this URL, and this is how we, we can have it running through. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click, and we're going to say convert this to a macro input. And then we have all of these symbols appearing, and we can see this now has a macro input. What we can do then is configure this to make it an iterative macro. So we'll click on the canvas and we'll click where it says workflow. And our macro is a standard macro, but we want it to be an iterative macro. And this will give us the opportunity to have outputs, re-inputs, etc. So to be organized, we'll call this um, original URL. And we'll call it I. And then we're going to add some other outputs. We're going to go to the interface section and we're going to add a macro output. And we know that this macro output is going to be our new URL. And we'll just call that U. And our other macro output is going to be um, data, which we'll call D. Um, what we also want to do is we want to make sure that whatever comes out of here goes back in here. So we're going to go up to view and open the interface designer. And in here, we can see that in our settings, we have the option to say the iteration input is going to be our original URL. The iteration output is going to be our new URL. So out comes the iteration, we get a new URL, it goes in there and it keeps going until something happens. Now here it says number of iterations 100. That means if we don't stop it, it's going to go 100 times and then stop. Then it can error, it can warn us, or it can output leftover records. But actually, this isn't going to reach 100 iterations because what's going to happen, and this is important when setting up your iteration macro, is you're going to reach a point where there will be no next um, URL. So this value will be null. So there's going to come a point where this value returns a null value, and then that will break the iteration. So 
your condition true false is really important when making an iterative macro because you want something that at some point is going to say there is no more um, and your iteration will end. Another important thing is for us to add um, a page number to know how are we actually um, going to know what, what version of the data we're keeping. So we're going to add another little formula that says page number. And we'll say that it's our engine iteration number plus one. So each time an iterative macro runs, it generates an engine, um, an iteration number, which basically tells us how many iterations we've run. So each time that comes through, it's going to have a number and we'll just peg that um, onto the end. And we obviously want to make that a double so that it can actually add these values. Clicking on our canvas, we can see that our iter engine iteration number is created every time we create an iterative macro. So you can see it starting at zero here. Um, let's remind ourselves, so the macro is coming out, new URL comes out, it goes back in and repeats the, the process over and over again, each time stacking up new pages. And in our interface designer, we can see that we're going to auto configure by name. Um, so at the end, we're going to have stack upon stack of pages of downloaded data. And the last thing we can do is we can get ourselves a custom image for our macro. Um, close this and then we can save this um, we save it in the desktop and we can call this Rick and Morty paginator okay save and we've got a YM, YXMC which tells us it's an Alteryx macro um, we can go back to our original page, copy out this text input that had our original URL, and we'll take ourselves to a new workbook, put in our URL and right click, insert macro. And we can see our new macro is waiting for us there. We can pop that in and put a browse tool on. And if you look closely at the macro, you can see you've got those um, little inputs U and D for the URL and the data that's going to come out the bottom. And it's cycling through, collecting all the pages. And when it's run, we have our 671 characters going all the way down here. And it's up to us then whether we want to output the data or we want to go in and in one go, extract all of these URLs like we did in the previous video. Thanks for watching this video. You'll find all the links to the reference material in the description below. And if you enjoy this video, please check out related videos from my colleague Robin that explain APIs in more detail and working with them on Alteryx.